Being able to enjoy the creative process comes more easily when you can relax and let go of any expectations. Today, I'm purposely using anything but a brush. It takes away precision and invites spontaneity. I also added tape outlines, which is another way to loosen up. Doing these things allows intuition to guide instead of thinking too much. New videos are coming out every Tuesday, so make sure you click the QR code to be notified as soon as it's available. All right, let's start by activating the canvas with the pencil. I do this pretty much every time I paint. Uh, since we're not using any brushes, I gathered a collection of scrapers and mark making tools um, just to see what I can do. And so this is a Posca pen. It's an acrylic marker. I don't usually start with one of these, but I thought it might be interesting to see what some dark marks to start out with would be like. And then, um, I took these Neocolor crayons to add some marks in because Neocolor crayons, they're one of my favorite mark making tools. They are water soluble and that means if I take something wet, typically I'll use a brush, but today no brush is allowed. Uh, so I could add water with um, a paper towel, like a wet paper towel or a spray bottle. But what will happen is they will spread their color like watercolor. So they're really fun to work with uh, to get some different colors into your pieces and uh, they're just kind of fun to scribble around so all of these scribbles you're not going to see most of them at the end but it's a fun way to get started to loosen up uh, so i have these colors today cadmium orange yellow green and medium violet they're very bright they're very bold i don't paint with those colors however there is a trick you can do to make your colors look more harmonized and that is to make a mother color and so I'm using these bright, bold colors that I wouldn't paint with on their own. I'm adding them all together to make one mother color. With that mother color, I'm going to be able to add, in, add little bits into any other color I use. And all of the colors will be similar in, um, and in harmony, which is really cool. It's a really cool way to make that happen. If you like to use a lot of different colors, sometimes they'll begin to clash. So if you have a mother color um, and in mixed into all of them, then it can it can be a really cool way to make your art look more sophisticated. So you can see it's just a brown color and you only need a tiny bit mixed into any of your other mixtures to make it work, which is really cool because only a little bit of paint can make a difference on other colors. I'm going to be using some cerulean blue, it's one of my favorites, and some white and yellow ochre um, to get some paint on these. So you can see I'm going I'm mixing the cerulean blue with the mother color. And it doesn't look like it does much, but if you take a brush or if I used that palette knife to put um, a little dab of the original color next to this color with the mother color in it, you would see that it's very different. It's gotten darker to closer to like a navy, like a light navy color instead of the bright cerulean. And if I mix it with white, I can get a lighter color that's going to be really pretty also. I was trying to make a grayish blue mixture with the light and I did get there. It's this really pretty blue gray, almost like a coastal blue. And this is an old gift card. You can use old gift cards or old um, like hotel keys when you go to hotels that have the, the slide in keys to let you in. 
And as you can see, as I'm doing this, there are marks on there that I could not predict that I cannot control. And that's part of the reason I'm doing it because I want to loosen up. I would like to enjoy the process. And this is just one way that you can do that by using different tools that you don't have control over. It's definitely a process of letting go. <laughs> if you are a perfectionist, and you like to have control of your outcome, this will be a challenge, but I do challenge you to try it because it can be very freeing. Also remember that if you let your acrylics dry, so I'm not going to make them dry too much in between, but I'm going around it right now. If you let them dry, you can always layer on top of things that you don't like. So right here, I was telling you how the Neo Color are water soluble. I have a wet paper towel and I am going over the marks of the scribbles that I did with the Neo Color. And you can see I got that beautiful blue green. And now with more of the yellow ochre crayon mixed in, it's like an olive. And so you can get these really beautiful areas of transparent color which makes it interesting next to your opaque colors and it's another way to loosen up because I'm just spreading it around I'm not sure what color is gonna be and what it's gonna look like but I do like all that transparency I think that's really pretty So this is a catalyst wedge and they're fun to make marks with too. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, I'll have it linked below in the supplies which one I use. But uh, this one, so if the paint is still wet you can scrape into it. So I was able to get a little bit going in that bottom right picture but the paint wasn't quite wet enough still to get too many scratches out of it. So if you want to use those, you can use it to apply paint, but you can also use it to scrape it away. So practice or uh, practice and experiment with that. I'm adding in some cadmium yellow medium to make a green color with my blue mixture. I am doing in my head. I have just abstract florals. So I'm looking for a green that I might be able to use as the suggestion of stems and leaves. I'm adding that mother color in, even though it's already mixed into the blue, I wanted it to be a more neutral green. this light olive green that I mixed up and I hope you could see that color mixing for me is a bunch of trial and error I kind of have an idea in my head of what color I might want but then it takes some time to get there and so don't be frustrated if you aren't getting the colors you want right away you can also see I'm applying with the palette knife which can you can apply it really thick or thin and get interesting marks either way but yeah don't get frustrated if you're not getting the colors you want right away it takes a lot of practice I've been playing with color for since I started painting because it's fascinating to me I love seeing the surprises that I get when I mix colors and seeing different colors together so it's just a lot of practice, a lot of color sketchbooks and um, going back and forth and being okay with going back and forth and adding more of one color and then not quite hitting it. So adding more of another color and that's okay. Totally okay. It's all about play and exploration.
This is a silicone brush, and I will have links to all of these tools below. This is one of my favorite tools. You can spread paint around with it. You can um, paint with it like I'm doing here, which this was an interesting project for me because I, I usually use brushes. And so this was actually a challenge for me trying to get these floral shapes without using a brush. It was very interesting. Um, I do like how these are turning out. But yes, this, these silicone brushes, they're not very expensive. I got them on Amazon and they're super helpful when trying to spread paint around in different ways. I'm adding darks in to these pieces to start to make them a little more exciting. So before these darks were on, you can see the top ones, they're pretty neutral and mellow and there's not much going on. Um, as soon as I add these darks in, it gives your eye that contrast that it's looking for to make things really interesting. And look at this blossom, that's so cool. A big blossom next to those three little ones. So using this scraper is actually working out really well. It's spontaneous, but I am able to get this uh, shape that is like a floral. And it's amazing how little distinction you need to know that it's a flower. Like our brains are amazing that way, where you can just have the suggestion of a flower and it just knows, oh, that's supposed to be a flower. So you can try scraping it on, you can try going, holding it straight up and down to get lines. I was trying all different kinds of things making this to see what could happen. You can see now though how that dark paint with the contrast against the light really makes a difference. Um, and so that's one thing to consider as you're making things. If you aren't enjoying what you are creating, it may be because there's not enough contrast. So try adding in some dark, dark colors or some really light colors in the same piece you're working on. Even if it's just a sketchbook page, if you're not interested in it, then you're not going to want to keep doing it and I want you to keep doing it. So try out some contrast to see if it makes it more interesting for yourself. At this point, I still have that green sitting over there and I think I need to use it because there's definitely something missing here. Like there's contrast now, but it needs something else. So that's a piece of shelf liner. It just makes really interesting marks. I use it a lot. That and bubble wrap um, are some of my favorite things to use. On the left, you can also see that sandpaper and corrugated cardboard, which I also use a lot. You can get very interesting marks with those. Um, the corrugated cardboard gives you some good stripes and the sandpaper gives you almost a splatter effect when you use it. I know I want some more definition and more like shapes that look like stems. I know I want to add some more marks around here with something. So even though I used the pencil at the beginning, it doesn't mean I can't use it again. So I'm just kind of defining for myself where I think that leaves might look good and um, just kind of defining the shapes that are already there that look like leaves already. A pencil is fun to use because it's a very neutral color, so you can add it in and it's not gonna change your composition too much, but it can give you some guidelines and it adds interest to the piece when you're looking at it closely. I'm adding some lighter marks back into the flowers just for some highlights with the gift card again. 
I use the gift card a lot on my big paintings too because I like the marks it makes um, and the spontaneity so I'm not really spreading it like I would on a big painting here I'm adding color in a different way but um, when you add it it can give you just little like dots of color kind of you just um, you can try it and see what it does I knew I wanted some dots going on here because I love dots and this is one of my favorite tools actually it's a nail from my husband's workshop which I usually use the other end to scratch into the paint because it makes really cool thin lines but this um, like making the dots with it is another option and then rolling it is really cool because you can get more lines so that's kind of fun to play with. You never know what you can use as a mark making tool. So definitely experiment, look around your house and see what you can find. love texture in my paintings but sometimes it can be a bit too much that's why I'm adding some of this more solid color back on top it also is a way to add contrast to have some solid pieces next to more textural areas and it gives the eye a place to rest if there's too much going on it can just feel busy This beautiful green color was waiting in the wings. Don't forget, anything but a brush can also include your fingers. <laughs> Bring yourself back to finger painting. It is so fun. Yes, it's messy, but paint washes off, I promise. So I'm adding this green into the mix of these paintings to add some uh, suggestions of leaves and foliage. There's my handy dandy nail. Since my paint is still so wet, I can scratch into it better than um, I can if it's dry. And I see those amazing lines that I get. I'm going to add a few final touches now that the paint is a little drier. I um, dried it with this craft blow dryer I have. It's a little less intense than an actual blow dryer. And then once these final touches are on, we get to do the tape reveal, which is one of my favorite things. When you do a tape reveal, just make sure you're pulling your tape off pretty slowly so it doesn't pull extra paint. But look how amazing it is to get yeah. these borders now in between each of the pictures yeah. you created. 
It's one of my favorite things okay. to see how it looks with these white borders around them. Okay. So crisp and clean, these edges. Now you can take this page out of your sketchbook if you want and cut each of the pictures apart so you can see what they look like alone. And also if you like one but not three of the others, then you don't have to keep them. But the ones that you do like, make a note of it in your sketchbook, paste it in, and write down what it is that you like about what you made. So. For instance, I really like the one that I made with the three little blooms. And I think it's because of the balance of the blue against the lighter colors. They're all really interesting, but I do think I like that one the best. So let's, um, I'll cut these apart and let's see what they look like on their own individually. But for, for example, for the sketchbook, if I wanted to keep the one with three blooms, I think I would paste it in and I would say I like the transparency with the opaque on top and I like the balance of the blues, the dark blues, against the transparent parts. So here, this is my favorite. And then we have this one, which I think I might have added a little too much blue, but it's still pretty cool. Light blue, I mean. Uh, this one... That one's pretty interesting too, actually. I like the gray with the dots balancing the top flower. And this one is kind of a mess, but that's why we practice. Thanks for joining me today. I'm all about helping you grow your own creative practice full of peace, intention, and curious exploration. Find out more when you visit jenfletcherart.com. I'll see you soon.